Yes, yes, yo. It's Fano again, doing another episode for Cloud Bounce Mixing Tips. Today, I will be talking about compressing your song. In the last episode, I was comparing compressing and limiting the song. And I said that I would get back to all the parameters of compressing your song. So let's take a look at how this works. Let's listen to the loop that I have once again. No compression or anything. I think yeah, I think the snare is a little pokey. So I want to bring it down a little bit just to give it a little more coherent sound and what some people call glue. So it's a it's a slightly tighter package. So let me play it once again without compression and then with compression. You hopefully heard what it's doing. In the end, I uh, compressed it even more, a little too much, just to emphasize the effect. So let's take a look at some of the most important controls that you probably find in most compressors today. So threshold here, this sets the level that the audio actually has to exceed before compressor will do anything. So think of it as a, like a like a level here and then the audio is passing the level and then compressor will act on the sound. So threshold is the level. You can actually see visually here the... the song level. So this will help and you will also see gain reduction. This means how much the signal is being pushed down when compressor acts on it. So next, ratio. This determines how, let's say, how aggressive or mild compression is, the extent of it, like how drastic it is. If you set it to 4 to 1, it means that audio actually has to exceed the limit by 4 decibels until you see a 1 decibel increase in actual level after compression. So when you, set, when you want to go really mild, you can, or if you want to crush it, you can, but always use your ears, listen to what happens. And um, attack time, this one here, I've set it to 18 milliseconds. I don't usually talk that much about numbers because I know people stick to numbers, but what it means is um, it t this is the time that it takes for the compression to actually reach the full extent of compression. So if I set it to 18 milliseconds, it means that it'll let 18 milliseconds of audio through until it fully compresses the sound. Why is this important and when? Well, if you want to let the snare come through nicely and keep its punch, make, make sure to have this roughly around, I'm going to say roughly because there's no rules, 10, 15, 18, just mess with it. But actually, let's take a listen to what happens when I bring the attack down. So, let's go. It's getting smashed. Don't smash your song. I will be talking about using very smashy compression for bringing up the character of a drum loop in a later episode, but don't do this for your song. It, it just do doesn't sound good. And the reason I want to talk about compression is every now and then being a mastering engineer, 
I receive songs that have been squashed with compression because sometimes people don't know how to compress lightly and properly. So please learn how to use compression. Always use your ears first. Another useful parameter here. In this compressor, it's called the low frequency relax. What it means that this parameter here determines what part frequency wise is, is being left out of the signal that actually triggers compression. So if I set it to 133, it means that comp the compressor will ignore the frequency content below this value. Why? Well, sub and bass take a lot of headroom and they can easily trigger the compressor in a way that you don't want it to happen if you want to target the snare. So this in a way this almost takes us to another important consideration in this compressor which is the delta mode when when i activate delta mode in this compressor it lets me hear what is being compressed so let's listen to delta and let me tweak the low frequency relax let's listen So now it's basically compressing everything. I don't want that. Like, I mean, the whole song is triggering the compressor and it's behaving too aggressively, too wi wild. So let me get it where it should be and let's listen to it. Keep in mind, this is the signal that is triggering the compressor. So that's it basically. Those are the basics. It will take you a little time to get used to compressing a signal and you have to listen really carefully and just flick it on and off to hear what it's doing. But these are the basics of using a compressor. Actually, almost forgot, release time. This means the time it takes for the compressor to get back to the non-compressed state. All these values together pretty much have to do with how smooth the sound is. If you go really, really quick with the attack, you can probably distort the sound. And if you release and attack times are messed up, it'll pump. So take your time to understand the parameters and also pay attention to how they sound. And you will be a compression master in no time. So that's it for now. I hope this was useful. And if you like this sort of content, make sure to subscribe to Cloudbound's YouTube channel. And got any comments, hit me up. Till the next time, guys.